episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Airfix's Hawker Hunter, Tacom's Little Russian Tractors, 135th scale rifles from Edward, Hobby Boss's Easy Tomcat, and a surprise discovery. New product rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. And by Cult TV Man's Hobby Shop, the place to go to for science fiction and fantasy kits, details, masks, decals, and more. Welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly video series where we give you guys a look at some reasons to spend your hard earned cash. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. We start this episode with Airfix's 148th scale Hawker Hunter. Now, I know people argue, and I'm probably inviting trouble, but I think the Hunter is one of the prettiest jet fighters ever. It's all sweeps and curves. <laughs> The earliest version of this Cold War jet entered Royal Air Force Service in 1954 as an interceptor. Its role shifted to ground attack and recon when the Lightning arrived at squadrons. Nearly of the 2000 built were exported to European, Middle Eastern, African, Asian, and even South American Air Forces. They were involved in multiple conflicts during that period, with some in service as late as the 1990s. Lebanon reportedly had some in service as late as 2014. Airfix's kit, which represents the F-6 interceptor, features fairly fine recessed panel lines on major airframe parts like the fuselage. The tail cone is separate and the kit provides optional parts for the brake chute equipped tail used on the F-6A. The upper half of the wings is a single part incorporating the center of the upper fuselage and will help set the slight anhedral. The fine surface detail continues to the lower wings, which also have the openings for the main wheel wells. Detail for the wells is included inside the upper wings. Also of note are the cut marks molded inside the dog tooth outboard sections, a preview of the company's forthcoming F4 kit with the straight leading edge. The elevators are molded with the one-piece horizontal stabilizers. The rest of the control surfaces, including the rudder, ailerons, and flaps, are separate and poseable. Full intake trunks buried in the wings include the boundary splitter plates and in with the front compressor fan. The other end has a jet pipe free of ejector pin marks with a detailed plate at the far end. Cockpit detail comprises a tub with molded pedals and side console detail instrument panel, controls, and a pretty good looking ejection seat that looks like a Martin Baker Mark II with optional cushions with and without molded seat belts. No pilot is provided. Other features include nicely molded landing gear and wheels with separate tires, thin landing gear doors, speed brake with detail inside, cartridge collection blisters, and fuel tanks to hang under the wings. There are extra pylons and rocket pods in the kit, but they aren't used here. Clear parts include optional open and closed canopies and lights. Cartograph decals provide markings, including plenty of stencils, for three hunters, two British, one with bright yellow and black checks on the tail, and a Dutch fighter. If you want more options, including several colorful aerobatic team planes as well as trainers, check out these sheets from Extra Decal. Fans of the Hunter have waited a long time for a really good 148 scale Hunter, and this kit looks like it'll build nicely out of the box. It should prove catnip for fans of British fighters. Tacom follows up its very nice 172nd scale US M1070 powered tank transporter with the Russian equivalent. It combines the MAZ 537G tractor with the CHMZAP 5247G trailer. Unlike the American kit, which came with the D9R dozer, this one does not provide a payload. Much of the cab is molded as a single part with separate doors and open vents on the sides and louvers on the roof. It fits over a base plate with the cab floor and full length fenders. The remainder of the cab comprises a long bench seat, steering wheel, and dash. This curbside kit doesn't include an engine, but there's plenty of drivetrain detail for the heavy central chassis, including crossmember plates, transmission and transfer case, drive shafts and differentials, and suspension units. Axle and brake units attached to nicely molded wheels that mate with big vinyl tires. Other features include the fifth wheel, fine ladders, fuel tanks, and more behind the cab. Clear parts provide the windshield and doors, headlights, and the rooftop spotlight. The bulk of the trailer is made up from two parts of the deck that fit over a frame. The suspension units are relatively simple two-part affairs that are each fitted with four wheels, including vinyl tires. The separate fold-down ramps are movable, and the optional supports allow for the ramp to be posed separate from the tractor. The hitch is relatively simple with sides in a center section as well as braces, but a couple of key pieces are supplied as photo etched brass. The same fret supplies grab handles, braces, and windshield wipers. The small decal sheet and color diagrams, also small, provide markings for four tank transporters, one each from Afghan, Hungarian, Iranian, and Soviet armies. This looks like a terrific kit and it'll be a manageable size when finished. It'd look great with a T-72 on the trailer. If you like the truck but want to build it without the trailer, check out Tacom's Russian Army tractor set. 
It includes the same MAZ 537 tractor we just looked at, including the same markings. In addition, you get the KZ KT 537 truck, which uses the same cab and drivetrain, but mounts an open cargo bed in place of the fifth wheel. One sprue accounts for the differences, including a slightly different chassis with a squared front end, the frame and bottom of the bed, as well as sides, front, and tailgate. The decals give markings for three trucks, all presumably Russian, although the instructions don't specify. Both of these kits look great, and if they build as well as the U.S. transporter, either would be a fun project. Speaking of the American truck and trailer, Tacom has released a limited edition of it, replacing the dozer with Tiger Model's 172nd scale M1A2 Sep Abrams with Tusk II. You can see our preview of the tractor and trailer in episode 147. And we looked at the Abrams way back in episode 83. As a refresher, let's look at the tank's parts, including the major body with sharp surface detail. The tracks are molded with the road wheels and should be a snap to assemble. The turret mimics the hull with separate bustle basket parts, a one-piece main gun, good hatch detail, and a lot more features. The tusk parts include new sand skirts with separate curve panels, more of those panels for the turret, and protective shields for the hatches. A small PE fret provides mesh for bustle racks and CIP panels for the turret. No decals are given, but a color diagram shows the tank in overall desert camo. Before we get on to our final kit, let's take a look at a couple of neat 135th scale weapon sets from Edward. These come under the brass and label. There's a set of M16 rifles, the early version appropriate for the Vietnam era, and a set of AK-47s. Each contains eight sharply cast rifles with fine details that will require care to get off the pore stubs. In addition, there are four magazines in each set and a fret of photo etched straps. These are well-made weapons that would look right at home in any number of dioramas or vignettes. Finally, let's take a look at Hobby Boss's 172nd scale F14A. This kit is labeled as part of Hobby Boss's easy assembly range, but it isn't a snap kit. No, in fact, what you get is a fairly serious glue together Tomcat. It features fine recessed panel lines and other surface detail on airframe parts. The fuselage is split vertically around the cockpit. The halves include the nose gear doors molded open. The rear fuselage is split horizontally, and parts like antennas and the strikes under the engines are molded on. They sandwich the wings, which match with cogs, so they can be opened or swept as you desire. Oddly, the instructions omit joining the wing halves, showing them being installed assembled. Also ignore the callout to paint the leading edge red, apparently a leftover from another kit with separate slats. The horizontal and vertical stabilizers are single pieces. Clever molding on the fuselage and tunnels gives a pretty good feel for the Tomcat intakes. And there's a fan and stator detail for the ends. At the other end are short jet pipes with afterburner detail and optional wide or narrow nozzles. The all-important cockpit includes a tub with decals to detail the consoles, three-part ejection seat and controls, instrument panels with decal dials, and nicely molded shrouds for front and back. Amongst the kit's other features are detailed gear bays, decent gear legs, including optional nose gear legs with the catapult arm stowed and the oleo extended, or with it out and the oleo compressed, thin gear doors with detail inside, and movable glove vanes. The cannon becomes in two parts, but there isn't any provision to pose it open. The mold seam down the center will need a little work to eliminate. The kit provides several stores, including fuel tanks, AIM-7 Sparrows, AIM-9 Sidewinders, and AIM-54 Phoenix air-to-air -air missiles. Decals provide markings for two Tomcats from VF-1 Wolfpack, one in high-vis markings during the squadron's deployment aboard USS Enterprise in the 1970s, the other a low-vis scheme aboard USS Ranger in the 1980s. This isn't the most detailed Tomcat on the market, but there's enough here to build a decent replica out of the box. As Elizabeth will find out when she sets out to build it. Looking forward to it. Look for full build reviews of the Hunter and Russian tank transporter and upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Mac. Hang on, I think we're getting a light breaking kit. Hot damn! It's Polo Light's brand new USS Discovery. The ship at the center of the latest Star Trek TV show. It's snapped together like many of the company's other Trek kits. This one 2500 scale kit comprises just 28 parts, including a stand. The twin disc primary hull is divided into upper and lower halves with raised and recessed surface details. The chevron-shaped secondary hull and integral engine pylon is similarly divided into upper and lower sections. The other ship sections include the stocking neck between the hulls, the suspended bridge with separate lower part. There is also the shuttle bay opening and impulse engines for the rear of the secondary hull. The warp nacelles comprise upper and lower halves that sandwich clear inserts. Other clear parts include impulse engines, bridge inserts, sensor, boussard collectors, and inserts for pylons. There's also a stand with a posable ball and socket mount. One of the coolest features is the inclusion of a full set of decals to recreate the intricate surface detail on the ship, which should make it easy to produce a nice replica of Discovery. They include alternate registry markings for the USS Glenn and ISS Discovery from the Mirror Mirror universe. 
Painting and marking diagrams are on the outside of the box tray. Nice surprise. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm a pop sensation, even at Miach. Now for the time. It should prove catnip for fans of British fighters.